Hello, today is day three of our 12 days of fasting that will end at 9 a.m. on Easter morning. And I pray that your day is off to a wonderful start. I have a heavy heart this morning because I just heard that one of our cornerstone leaders lost his father who had contracted the COVID-19 virus. And I ask that you keep that leader in prayer. I won't say his name right now or his uh, father's name for the sake of privacy, but just lift him up and God knows his name. I want to encourage you to uh, join me tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. for our Pray First prayer meeting. This meeting is so important at this time in our nation because we know that our nation is on a uh, under a shelter-in-place mandate for all of the month of April. And I'm hearing of other nations that are um, going through shelter-in-place fatigue, having cabin fever, and almost ready to revolt. People are rising up and they're getting anxious. And I want us to come together and pray for God's peace and grace as we go through this month and the months ahead, not being able to travel freely or to commune with individuals the way that we are uh, normally used to doing so, looking to the left and to the right and seeing everything that we used to be able to um, access now being closed down. In the days ahead, we must, as God's people, take our eyes off of what we see and place them on who we know. In fact, I'm reminded of Isaiah chapter six, where the prophet says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on his throne. And I want you to know, the Lord didn't all of a sudden arise when King Uzziah died. No, he was there all the time. Isaiah had to look up. And Pray First gives us an opportunity to start the month off together as a church family, not looking down at all that is happening or not even just looking down. But instead, looking up and reminding ourselves that all of our help comes from the Lord. Nowhere else, no one else, and from nothing else. In fact, Psalm 34, 17 through 19 reads this way. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. The righteous person faced many troubles as we are right now, but the Lord comes to the rescue each time. But I want you to know the Lord hears the cry of his people, but we have to cry out to him. And some of us right now, we just want to cry. And I understand that. I know what you're going through right now. Many of you have lost loved ones. Many of you have loved ones who are battling this, this vicious disease right now, and they're fighting for their lives. And I went through what you're going through right now. In fact, it's been less than a year since I lost my dad, who for 16 days battled for his life and ultimately passed away. And I certainly cried, but I know that my help didn't come from me crying. It came when I cried out because the Lord promises to come to our rescue if we take ourselves from a place of crying to crying out to him. And I encourage you right now for the rest of this day to cry out to the Lord. Cry out to him and call upon his name to be all that you need him to be. Call upon the name of Jireh, your provider, Rapha, your healer, Shalom, your peace, Shama, the one who is with you, Nisi, the banner of victory that you can wave right now in the midst of the battle. I pray that all of you are, are keeping up on your one-year Bible reading because yesterday's reading had a wonderful uh, verse in there. It came in Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 17, and this was God speaking to the Israelites. And he said this, never forget what the Amalekites did to you as you came from Egypt. They attacked you when you were exhausted and weary, and they struck down those who were straggling behind. They had no fear of God. Therefore, when the Lord your God has given you rest from the enemies in the land he has given you as a special possession, you must destroy the Amalekites and erase their memory from under heaven. Never forget this. And I want you to know, we have a new enemy coming against us, God's people right now. And it's called COVID-19. And just like the Amalekites, COVID-19 has no fear of God. Why? Because it's attacking the weak and the exhausted. It's attacking those who are straggling behind our uh, world's elderly and those with compromised immune systems and who are sickly in some way. This disease has no fear of God, but we, the people of God, have a fear of God, and we have to fight this enemy, and we will win, but we fight our battle, not in um, laboratories trying to find cures, but we fight our battle on our knees. Let's come together tomorrow online and fight this battle that's already been won in the spirit. 
and is waiting to be manifested in the flesh. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.